Much of the news in the UK this morning is centred around analysing the election results and working out what they will mean for the future political complexion of this country and our nation. But what significance does the UK political landscape have globally? And is Britain still punching above its weight on the international stage? To join me with his thoughts on this and other matters of a geopolitical nature is John Lachlan, journalist, author and lecturer in political science and history. Good morning, John. Good, good uh, afternoon, Sonia. Oh, goodness. Where are you, John? In Paris. Oh, wonderful. You? Oh, I'm in London. I'm in London. And oh, okay. it's still yeah, morning okay. Sorry. here. All right. well, I was <laughs> oh, I yes, of course, you're Australia. thinking I'm in Australia. Got you. Yeah, oh, okay. how wonderful of you to be so, so okay. considerate. A day of elect, as I say, a day of elections here. Um, and I think to a degree, some people believe that this may give us an indication as to our next PM. What position would you say the Prime Minister of Great Britain holds on the world stage at this moment? Is it still significant? No, I think that uh, Britain's credibility uh, is uh, very low, I would say, in the eyes of much of the world. Um, and I think that that goes for the West in general. Uh, obviously, the Americans uh, are the leaders of the West. And I think that uh, the whole um, Western foreign policy shtick about the rules-based international order, uh, which uh, was the slogan that was used to justify uh, what is effectively uh, intervention in the war in Ukraine, um, now I think lies in tatters, this notion, because uh, obviously we can see the double, everyone can see the double standards vis-a-vis uh, -vis Israel. Uh, we can see um, that, uh, you know, uh, on the one hand, the West claims to stand for international law, but then uh, then uh, turns the, you know, look, uh, turns a blind eye to what's happening in Gaza and so on. And Britain, of course, um, within that general context, I would say, of loss of credibility, uh, it doesn't really have a foreign policy, Britain. It, all its foreign policy is when the Americans say jump, the British say how high. Uh, and that, that also uh, destroys the credibility of not just Britain. Uh, uh, I think it, what I'm saying is true of all European states, of all the G7 states, of all the European Union states. But Britain um, is even more uh, pro-Atlanticist, pro-American than than most other European countries. I mean, it's a it's a pretty stiff competition. So uh, I, I would say that British uh, standing is is probably at an all time low because in addition to wow. the hypocrisy, there is also ridicule. So there's hypocrisy and ridicule. That's my view. I mean, that's quite serious, isn't it? It's a serious statement because, I, I mean, it would appear. So So is your impression that after our sort of involvement in conflicts like Ukraine and Gaza, et cetera, that that has just our standing has just continued to be reduced or has that not had an impact? No, I think, of course, I think it's had an impact. I think it's the, the cause. Uh, after mm. the end of the Cold War, NATO decided to reinvent itself. We've just commemorated the 25th anniversary of its attack against Yugoslavia. A completely illegal attack, a completely illegal war, it was never approved by the Security Council. It was a blatant violation of international law. And yet it was waged in order to give NATO so supposedly a reason for its continuing existence. Then you had the attack on Iraq, which, of course, Britain famously supported, although that was not a NATO operation. And then you had the attack on Libya in 2011, which Britain, France and America uh, joined in with. And those were wars of aggression. Plus, of course, you had 20 years of occupation of, Af of Afghanistan. And not only were these wars illegal, I personally uh, am skeptical about international law. I think that it's yes. uh, overhyped. But uh, in the uh, vocabulary of the Western leaders themselves, these uh, wars were clearly illegal and therefore criminal. Uh, and so it's completely absurd now for these same leaders uh, to, uh, as they are doing, to egg on the International Criminal Court, for example, to issue arrest warrants against Russia, to, press, to pressure the, international, the same International Criminal Court uh, to not uh, issue a West, arrest warrants as clearly it wants to do against uh, the Israelis and perhaps against Hamas as well. Why? Because they say that such warrants will uh, jeopardize peace negotiations. Well, maybe they will. But in that case, mm -hmm. they shouldn't have been issued in other circumstances either, because, yes, they do jeopardize peace negotiations. So wherever we look, uh, we see basically hypocrisy and double standards. And the rest of the world, which is growing, I mean, China is the largest uh, economy in the world by far now, as well as being the most populous country. Russia uh, has shown very considerable 
military prowess on the battlefield in Ukraine. Uh, these countries are barreling ahead. Uh, uh, the BRICS countries are, are growing. The BRICS organization is doubled in size at the beginning of this year and so on and so forth. So this this Western hegemony, which um, mm. was the was the only possible basis uh, for all these various posturings, is in fact disappearing like sand under the feet of the people that uh, believe that they stand on it. Uh, and that's why I say that we are, I would say, the British are now ridiculous uh, because everybody knows that they, uh, all they do is is follow the Americans. Uh, mm. and, then, and, but, and, 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 and then they panic when uh, genocide is accused in Israel because their their own lawyers in the Foreign Office and so on are uh, <laughs> sending up memos saying you can't possibly uh, support this action because it's you're going to get in trouble for genocide. So mm. they're, they're not showing any statesmanship. That's that's my feeling. There's no sense of the, of the right. state, of the British right. state, no sense of national interest. No. Uh, there is just moral, moralizing and posturing. And that doesn't wash. Yes, I think we're all sick of globalism. I certainly know that people on the ground are. I certainly am. So talking about US, how significant do you think those US campus protests are? I think they are very significant because, you know, um, uh, when uh, empires collapse, as the American empire is collapsing, uh, problems uh, crop up and then more problems crop up and they accumulate and they accumulate. And the empire thinks, well, we'll deal with that one or we'll deal with this one. But there comes a point where the critical mass of problems uh, is too big and the the, the usual uh, recipes don't work anymore. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, in uh, internal American politics, leaving aside all the lack of credibility on the international state, which I've just mentioned, uh, there is in internal American politics, there is a terribly deleterious atmosphere and has been now for a long time. As we know, the 2020 election uh, was contested. Trump says it was rigged. Uh, then there was the, the the allegations of January the 6th. There is a sort of, and then of course, the, the arguments between Texas and the federal government over the over the southern border with Mexico, all these very severe uh, conflicts over legitimacy, over the actual sources of legitimacy in the American state uh, have been brewing now for a while. And then you have uh, a, a I don't I can't exaggerate and I don't want to exaggerate and say it's civil war, but you have images which everybody is looking at of the police. Uh, acting with incredible heavy handedness. You have uh, this nonsense about the anti-Semitism awareness bill, which criminalizes uh, the Bible effectively. Um, you have uh, uh, an overreaction there, uh, what I therefore by the by the state uh, against uh, what what are entirely legitimate uh, protests, however they've been carried out. You know, the the basic feeling at the bottom of them is is legitimate, uh, and and therefore I think that the 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 sort of basic uh, agreement about legitimacy, which uh, should exist and must exist in any democracy, uh, is uh, fa is disappearing, is crumbling uh, mm -hmm. in the United States of America. And we all know what a volatile country that is. It's very high levels of violence. Everyone's got guns. Uh, I, 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 I fear the worst uh, for the United States. Oh. I think that oh. the, the deep state, the American deep state will do almost anything, perhaps anything to prevent Trump from becoming president. If they fail to prevent him and he does become president, uh, that will be uh, also, as Trump himself said, a bloodbath. So I, 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 I'm extremely pessimistic. Oh, that, that's not good, is it? What about the future of NATO under Trump? NATO? Well, uh, I think that NATO uh, is a busted flush. I mm. think that NATO has thrown everything and the kitchen sink uh, at Ukraine. Uh, mm. Some of what they've thrown has now been put on exhibition in a central square in Moscow. So you can go and look at uh, British tanks and French tanks and American tanks now in uh, outside a big museum in Moscow. Uh, NATO has thrown everything it has with its gigantic military budget, particularly, of course, the American military budget at Ukraine. And uh, it's not winning. And there really is no prospect of NATO winning in its own terms, which were which were, of course, to expel Russian troops from the whole of Ukraine, including Crimea. And if this alliance, which uh, which is objectively the most the biggest, the most the richest, the most powerful, at least on paper, um, military alliance in the history of the world, if it can't fight a classical war 
This is the key point. NATO has been fighting um, counterinsurgencies and not winning them, but it's been fighting counterinsurgencies for 20 years. Afghanistan or Mali or, or sm small wars like Libya, where they're helping local rebel militia to come to power. It has not fought a classical old fashioned war uh, in the field with tanks and armies. It's never fought such a war. And now it's fighting one, or at least by proxy. Uh, and in my view, it's losing it. And if indeed mm. it does lose it, at least, or doesn't win it, which, I, which I'm absolutely certain it will not win in its own terms, then of course, uh, all the remarks I made about credibility concerning Britain uh, and America apply also to NATO. Well, let us see what comes to pass. John Lachlan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. John, of thank course, you, as I say, lecturer in political science and history. Have a lovely day in Paris over there, John. And uh, we'll be right back. Take good care of yourself. We'll be right back after the headlines. Here's what's making news. TNT Radio News.